Hello and welcome. We're on a mission to explore and document 100 different Colorado communities, and this month we went to Florence and Penrose. In today's video, I'll explain their history and geography, as well as give you first-hand advice on what we found and what to expect if you go there. Let's get started. The area was initially inhabited by the Arapaho and Ute Indians. In 1806, American explorer Zebulon Pike and his team passed through following the Arkansas River into the mountains on their search for the Colorado River headwaters. American prospectors began entering Colorado following the creation of the Santa Fe Trail in 1822. Though the Santa Fe left the Arkansas River at La Hanna, the Pioneer Trail continued west into the mountains. On this trail, near Florence, William Bent built his first stockade to both trade with the Indians and supply those heading in and out of the mountains. It was short-lived, and Bent eventually moved his operations east in 1828. In 1830, French explorer Maurice tried his luck building a trading post on the Adobe Creek. I didn't find much information about this fort other than reading that it was the location of a battle between the Americans and Sioux in 1838. With this information, I'm led to believe that this trading post was the reason a group of men called the Pathfinders chose the area to develop ranch land in the early 1840s. In 1862, local settler James McCandless struck oil on his property. The new discovery was going to bring growth to the area, prompting him to team with other landowners to plan out the town of Florence. Named after his daughter, Minnie Florence McCandless, the town was completed in 1870. Sometime over the next decade, Florence was connected to the railroad, which greatly increased the local economy. The earliest settlement near Penrose was in 1872 when the Glendale Stagecoach Inn opened. Located northeast of Florence on Beaver Creek, the Stagecoach Inn became a bustling rest stop that grew into a small community simply called Glendale. Around the same time, the close-by mining towns of Coal Creek, Williamsburg, and Rockville also formed. Florence incorporated in 1887. Cripple Creek to the north began its gold boom in 1890, and the nearby Phantom Canyon was the only way anyone could get there. At first, only pack animals could pass, but in 1892, the free road was finished, allowing stagecoaches. Two years later, the Florence Cripple Creek Railroad opened, making it easy for both goods and passengers to get to and from the mines. Florence expanded, adding processing plants and warehouses to accommodate the extra traffic. By 1900, Florence was the 10th largest city in Colorado and a key player in four different industries, agriculture, mining, oil, and logistics. With the ups come the downs, and things soon began to change with the Cripple Creek Strike of 1903. Naturally, the strike caused a decline in gold production even when it ended, and Florence was forced to look at other ways to combat this. The Portland Cement Company arrived, opening a plant east of town in 1905, along with three bedroom communities affectionately named Concrete, Cement, and Portland. This plant still operates today as Halsum. In 1907, Colorado Springs businessman Spencer Penrose bought some land and water rights on Beaver Creek near the Glendale Stagecoach Inn. He immediately built a dam and parceled out the land, creating and incorporating the town of Fremont in 1908. The name changed to Penrose after himself when the local post office moved to it from Glendale. The early 1910s saw growth for both Florence and Penrose with the addition of shops, hotels, and schools. Seven miles of track was added to connect Penrose to the main rail line, and dozens of area farms were started. Florence contributed to World War I by closing sections of town to add extra oil lines. Following the war, the area was rewarded with economic decline. Very few miners returned to Cripple Creek, causing the Florence Cripple Creek Railroad to close and the gold boom to end. In 1925, a pipeline explosion downtown leveled an entire block and set the town back again just in time for the Great Depression and Dust Bowl. Both Florence and Penrose saw their lowest populations in the 1930s, and since then, the nearby growth of Pueblo and Canyon City have kept them in the shadows with slow growth until just recently. Today the area is best known for its large number of prisons. Since Skyline Correctional opened in 1957, six state and four federal facilities have been built within a 15-minute drive of Florence, including ADX, which you probably know better as Supermax. In addition to this, Penrose has become a local destination for apple and pumpkin picking, and both towns have become bedroom communities with most residents commuting elsewhere for work. The future doesn't indicate any major upcoming changes except maybe a slight population increase. Florence and Penrose lie towards the eastern edge of Fremont County along both U.S. Highway 50 and the Arkansas River. They are conveniently located a short distance from Canyon City, Pueblo, and Colorado Springs. Florence has a population of 3,800 and Penrose has slightly less with 3,200. 
They sit at 51 and 5300 feet respectively, with the Front Range Mountains to the north and the Wet Mountains southwest. If that southern view looks familiar, it's because they are the peaks displayed on the Colorado license plate. The Arkansas River flows casually to the east, hills lining its path. Florence lies within these hills, but Penrose is up on top to the northeast. Dozens of streams flow into the Arkansas from nearby mountains including Hard Scrabble, Beaver, and Eight Mile Creeks. It's also worth noting that the Pueblo Reservoir is a short drive downstream. Florence's location offers natural pathways in all directions. To the north, Colorado 67 or Phantom Canyon Road will take you in the mountains to Victor and Cripple Creek using the old free road from the 1890s. If you take 67 south, you'll quickly reach Wetmore and Hard Scrabble Pass, which connects to Rye and Westcliff. To the northeast, Colorado 115 winds its way to Fort Carson and Colorado Springs in 45 minutes, but this is the most fatal stretch of road in the state according to CDOT. Highway 50 east will get you to Pueblo in 30 minutes. Take it west and Canyon City is 15 minutes with the Royal Gorge 10 farther. The towns of Rockvale, Coal Creek, and Williamsburg are immediately southwest, and the prisons are both south and northwest. Florence and Penrose are laid out on grid systems, with Florence being off-center parallel to the river, and Penrose being north-south with a central business district surrounded by spread-out avenues labeled numerically and alphabetically. Being only six miles apart from each other, the weather is nearly always the same in both, with summer days warming to the low 90s and summer nights staying in the 60s. Like the rest of the Front Range, monsoon season brings weekly, sometimes daily thunderstorms to the area from June to August. Tornadoes don't typically form, but hail can get quite large from the updrafts caused by the nearby mountains. Fall and spring are typically pleasant, with warm sunny days in the 70s and 80s. The leaves change the first half of October, and the many farms in the area mean pumpkin patches, apple orchards, and corn mazes are all readily available. By January, the weather is only warming into the 40s during the day and dropping to the 20s or less overnight. Like Pueblo, Florence and Penrose are in the banana belt due to the placement of the local mountains, which reduces moisture along this part of the Arkansas. The area receives 15 inches of precipitation on a good year, and only 30 inches of snow that melts quickly in direct sunlight. The landscape consists of scrubby bushes and short grasses with trees being few and far between, but this leaves a wide open view of the surrounding mountains. We split up the two towns starting with a separate trip to Penrose in September to pick some apples. Besides Pueblo itself, Penrose is the closest town to us in Pueblo West, and we arrived at 3rd Street Apples after only 25 minutes. Our first impression of Penrose was that it felt like a combination of Pueblo West and Pueblo Mesa, with farms coexisting among regular suburban housing. Apple picking went great, 3rd Street didn't have any entrance fee, and they charged by weight for the apples, of which there were multiple different kinds to choose from. After leaving with more than we intended, we drove to central Penrose to begin walking around town. We parked at the Penrose Parks and Rec, which was a very nice park that had two playgrounds, a ball field, restrooms, and covered seating. Central Penrose is condensed more than the surrounding farmland, and we had a plan that would take us a couple blocks around the heart of it. We turned south on Fremont Avenue and were immediately run up on by an unleashed dog from the house on the corner of 5th. At first nothing came of it, but as the kids got worried, the dog got excited and he began circling us growling and barking while the owner very slowly made his way to us. After yelling and kicking at the dog, he finally retrieved him with a hollow, sorry, ignoring everything I said after that. Now shaking with adrenaline, we continued to Broadway, the main street through central Penrose. There were several stores here including a supermarket, barbecue restaurant, and antique store to name a few. Across the street, dozens of bikers were gathered at the VFW. Everyone we encountered was friendly, but I'd be lying if I said we didn't feel like outsiders. From the way we were dressed to the fact I was holding my camera filming, it felt like everyone was looking at us sideways. These are feelings I don't typically get on our trips, so at this point we were uncomfortable and just ready to get back to the car. We cut the trip short by turning on Hawkins and left. We returned to the area two weeks later to visit Florence. We turned south on 115 and meandered down the hill parking on Main between Petroleum and Pikes Peak Avenues. Florence has been called the antique capital of Colorado, and it lived up to that title. We were pleasantly surprised to find dozens of shops and restaurants open for business and walked into the closest store. Then we checked out the next one, and the next one, and the next one. Most of them antique stores, and almost all of them opened on Sundays. We went two blocks to Santa Fe, then crossed over to check everything out on the other side. We turned onto Petroleum, passing the old Elks Lodge and the Florence Brewing Company on Front Street. Beyond that, we could see the old Florence train station, which still proudly displayed the name Denver Rio Grande above its doors, though it's now a retirement home. 
There were a few houses across from a large warehouse building with the tracks directly behind that. Back on Main Street, we walked west until the street curves, passing even more antique stores. For the first time since starting these trips, we actually passed by open shops because there were so many antique stores selling so many random things. We took a quick rest outside of the fire department, then continued north to 3rd where we turned at the large Pulse Church. We went three blocks passing some Victorian houses. We noticed all of the curbs in this part of town had little gullies built to keep the water off the streets, which makes another unique drainage system to add to the list. We arrived at Pioneer Park, which was large and grassy. There was a gazebo and volleyball court, as well as a smaller playground. The local swimming pool is found here, but of course was closed for the season. We let the kids burn out some energy, and once they lost interest, we started making our way back to the car. On our way, we passed a really old-looking house, and the owner was outside watering, so we complimented it. She said it was built after the Civil War, but before the town was actually laid out, which must make it one of the oldest houses in the state, dating to the late 1860s. We then got back to the car, and were back on the road home in no time. Florence and Penrose are typically passed by towns on your way to Canyon City or Pueblo, and despite living 30 minutes away from them for years, we had never properly visited either one. Florence was a delight and had a much richer history than I anticipated. It was filled with beautiful Victorian buildings and had way more going on than we expected. We always thought of Florence as just another little town, but not anymore, and we will definitely return in the future to explore it farther. Penrose, on the other hand, was a great place for apple and pumpkin picking, but not much more. I could see it offering folks a quiet life on acreage, but it's run down with trailers on most of the lots and has an extremely small business district. It's not a place to just walk around either, you need to have a destination, and for these reasons we're going to disqualify it. Taking our personal experiences and opinions into account, here's where we've ranked Florence. We hope you enjoyed visiting Florence and Penrose with us and that you join us next month when we visit Colorado's second city. Second largest, second most important, and second most populated with a metro area of over 800,000 people. We'll see you next time in Colorado Springs.